International College of Financial Planning. Uh, well, uh, 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 on behalf of ICFP, I welcome you to to this webinar on investment banking. So, uh, let me let me uh, introduce you uh, to the speaker of the day. Uh, that is uh, Shreya Khanna. Uh, Shreya is uh, uh, an alum of uh, ICFP and. Uh, uh, her educational background is uh, she has done economic honors from Dalatram College, uh, 2015, uh, and then uh, she joined a, a masters in business administration uh, in two, and she passed out in 2008. Uh, she is a CFA level three candidate, and uh, as far as her work is concerned, she has done internship with the companies like Times Network and Wellpro. Uh, well, Wellpro offered her a pre-placement offer also. But uh, she got a better opportunity and better uh, 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 company and a better profile. And she joined Aurum Equity Partners, uh, which is again, uh, she joined as an investment banking analyst there. Uh, then she joined Apical Capital Advisors. Uh, uh, she was there for a very short duration, but joined as senior. And uh, currently she's working as a senior analyst with the uh, uh, Maple Capital Advisors. So uh, uh, I'll not take the much time and uh, we'll hand over the session to uh, Shreya and she would be talking on uh, the investment banking and the uh, the nitty gritties of investment banking and the kind of uh, uh, skills you require, uh, right? Uh, or the company they look for the, the kind of skills in a candidate. Uh, Later on, in case if you have any queries, you have any questions, you can always uh, uh, write in a chat uh, to share. She will be able to ask. Uh, share, you can start. So uh, to start with, uh, Rishita has uh, briefly given you what I do and what is my background. I'll just uh, take you through it once again. I did my schooling from Delhi, Cambridge School, and uh, then I did economics honors from uh, Dalatram College. Was that I was working in financial media. My interest uh, uh, was specifically uh, into finance, and um, I was keen to do something different. And um, I wanted to find out what financial media was the initial thought. But when I met lots of CEOs, CFOs. Um, my interest towards banking originated. The next thought I had was how to do it and uh, uh, why to do it. So I'll just briefly explain to you uh, why I chose this and why uh, if you want to choose it, what is the right option to go about it. We'll quickly begin. I'll just share my screen. I've prepared a brief um, PPT for all of you guys. So I'll just uh, take you through it. So uh, to broadly explain, uh, you need to understand what banking is and uh, then only you can understand if you have a proper interest here or you uh, are not liking it, is it up to your aptitude, is it not. So to briefly uh, tell you, we are in middle, like the way brokers work for retail clients, we work for corporate clients. Corporate banking is different, they give loans to corporates or help corporates uh, get loans we are different uh, we majorly uh, do a marriage between a company and uh, uh, funds slash other companies slash uh, banks slash um, uh, big family offices so as you can clearly see on this slide what happens is that corporates generally uh, come to an investment bank and they tell their requirements. Now these requirements can vary. 
some people uh, are in early stage that they are a startup and they want to start so there there we have different levels of funding when you are funded on an idea that is a seed stage funding so it's it said like uh, you sow a seed and then a plant comes up so uh, that is a very small amount of funding that happens then there are venture capitalists that private equity so i'll briefly explain all of this going forward but i'm just telling you what all right now in uh, investment bank does so this company either comes for you to funding because they have different needs they have to start a business they have to grow a business they have to expand a business number two condition is they come to you for a mergers acquisition uh, opportunity either they are looking uh, looking to um, partner with somebody to grow their business they are looking to sell their business to another business because of multiple reasons that can uh, have they have in their minds uh, i have in my personal uh, you know capacity seen people wanting to sell business because uh maybe they are 75 years old and uh, they don't have children to take care of it or their children are not interested so they want to sell some businesses are not doing well and so they want to sell some businesses collaborate with global giants to increase their presence so this is a merger or an acquisition opportunity uh which comes to an investment bank number one was private equity funding or funding to be precise the other Uh, i told you was mna third is if they want working capital loans they we these are big big ticket size loans so a bank also helps these but on a overall level what happens is there are bonds shares or exchange of capital that is happening as you can see we are in between we have contacts with funds funds we are connected with we are con connected with companies so these companies eventually get capital from these institutions that are investors and in exchange of that they give some equity uh, of their company say that um, for example uh, this company had all of their shares for their own now an investor comes so he is putting in money he will want something in exchange so he gives certain percentage of his total shareholding in exchange of the capital he gets now this whole process as easy it is to explain it is very difficult on paper it's not easy it's a lot of um, different uh, permutation combinations to start with and going forward there are lot of uh, financial aspects involved in it broadly on this slide i just wanted to explain what is it we basically help a corporate and the investors get married that's that's the thing we do now important part is which corporate is best for which investor and which um investor is best for which corporate like you find a marriage which girl is best for which boy so this is basically an alliance which which goes for a long period of time and so hence this collaboration the synergies have to be very important going further as i told you there are broadly two areas we work on one is m&a advisory the other is underwriting now uh, m&a as i told you uh, a very simple example i can give you is uh, okay I'll, let me tell you uh, about uh, investment or a transaction my company did in fact so you get a better example so you all of you must have heard about fitness first gym and uh, you must have also heard about cure fit all right both these players were into fitness areas they had their gyms cure fit has multiple other services uh, like um, cult fit and eat fit mind fit so everything both of these were into fitness domain now fitness first had uh, had reached it reached its maturity they had multiple gyms they wanted to basically the promoter wanted to move out of the business for cash needs for different needs or starting a new business so they approached us and we said why not so we found the exact player who would be interested to buy them give them the right valuation so cure fit came and they took over all the gyms of fitness first 
So this is an acquisition that happened when CureFit bought Fitness First. So this is a merger or an acquisition opportunity. Now acquisition is when, you know, uh, there are two parties, A and B, and A takes over B. So now the whole thing is A. Merger is when there are two parties, A and B, and the combined party is A plus B. Because it can, it can be a majority stake, it can be a minority stake. Majority state, stake is generally 50% and above, and minority stake is less than that. So that is how our role basically comes up is at the introduction, then how the deal will be structured, what percentage will go at what valuation, what amount of money will come, in how many tranches the money will come, what all uh, information exchange will happen. So there is a lot of multiple uh, uh, you know, information exchanges which happen over a long period of time. These transactions usually take minimum of six months to a maximum of you know two three years also to materialize so all of you know that walmart has put in money in flipkart so that is how you know uh, something like this can happen okay going forward the next thing is uh, that happens is underwriting now underwriting is a form of uh, raising capital through selling of stocks or bonds to investors now underwriting uh, you know can be at a higher level, uh, can be at a very big level like an IPO, where these stocks are sold to um, public. Okay, lots, uh, the, the, the number of shares. And the smaller version is when it, it's given to particular uh, investors. Now, uh, IPO stage comes whenever you have typically, you know, a, a decent revenue, 100 crores of revenue uh, on your uh, in your books and generally it's the last stop. So generally these are exit options. IPO is one of the most common um, exit option seat where the company goes public and the general public is allowed to invest and grow. So you know the company like Reliance they grow with people. People have put in a lot of money there. Okay so these are the key areas we work on. Now, um, these are the services we provide. And why am I going backwards as to telling you what is investment banking, what do we do, and what are the services we provide? Uh, the sole reason being, I want, to, uh, un I want to make you understand what is the macro level economics involved here, and then take you back to what all is needed. So I told you what, um, you know, what banking is, I told you what m and is, what funding is. I'll tell you how it happens okay so generally um, a client we meet a client and he tells supposedly for example he tells me that uh, ma'am I have an ice cream business and uh, I want to sell off this business because I want to start another business I'm like okay we go we first see the whole plant we analyze uh, is the machine quality good is the land on a decent pay there are no legal issues then we analyze their numbers, their historical numbers. After we have made an in-depth analysis of the whole uh, company, then we go and tell them, okay, now we want to engage with you and we think we can buy, uh, get you a buyer. So then we sit down with them and we decide an, uh, you know, a strategy. Now, as I've written your acquisition strategy, now acquisition strategy can be from a person who's buying this ice cream company Generally, um, we uh, this is, I think, a wrong word, acquisition strategy, more like a strategy. We define, okay, this is how we will go forward. And this is how we'll shape the transaction. Then there are criteria. Okay, the promoter also has certain things in his mind that uh, these will be the criteria I want. I want to sell, maybe he says, you know, I only want to sell in India and I don't want to sell abroad. So... Um, then we take that in mind. He says that, okay, I don't want to sell to a normal person. I want to send an MNC. There can be different criteria you have. Our basic criteria is if the company is 100 crore worth, we don't see any other company who is less than 250 crores buying it. So we set up certain filters for us. 
Then we start searching for the target. Okay, now who can buy? Now there are multiple ice cream companies in the country. There are many big brands like um, Baskin Robbins or uh, say Gelato, number of. So we go to these guys and we have proper documentations in place which we have made. And then we go to them. If they like, then the whole planning is done. How the acquisition will take place. Then once they like everything, then the final word comes. Okay, now what amount you know should this be sold at? You know, and um, uh, what at what price should I be uh, selling it? So at that point, then we you know then the valuation happens. We see in the numbers. Uh, we do basically mostly when this happens, there are two three criteria we do valuation on. One is um, discounted cash flow, and the other is the and the other is the comparables market comparables. So discounted cash flow is basically a technique where you know you forecast cash flows for next five years, taking a growth year, and then you um, come to the net present value. And then it is, it's decided as to what percentage has to be taken. Now, if some of you are finance students, you might just understand how it happens. But if you are not able to, and if you want to get into banking, this is one of the very important things you have to do. Then negotiation happens. One one person says, "No, I will." I, I the seller says, "I want to. I don't want to sell at hundred." The buyer says, "I cannot pay more than one twenty. So somewhere in between, maybe it settles at one ten. Then a major process of due diligence happens where um, you know the books of the seller are uh, you know in, looked into deep. Every financial number is um, understood, taken care of, asked questions. Lots of Excel sheets, lots of um, uh, you know analysis, lots of uh, back and forth and in information is exchanged. Then there's a purchase or sale sales contract. Which is generally we call it term sheet, which happens. You know, final number is in place. Then the financing happens. The buy buyer eventually gives some money, and it starts happening. Then you know the company is bought. So this is exactly how exactly a transaction uh, works, and this is how we advise the whole process. Now to do all of this, there are certain skills which are needed. From the beginning level only, you know, you need to have all these skills. If you don't have these skills, then um, it's very difficult to operate. First, most important skill is financial modeling, which I think uh, uh, you are the right place if you're if you want to learn financial modeling. ICFP helps you understand this very well. Um, financial modeling is briefly. You have all the historical numbers, all the historical P and Ls and balance sheets of uh, a particular company. You analyze, you take out ratios, you see patterns, and based on those patterns and conversation with the companies, you come up with assumptions, via which you will forecast next five years numbers for that particular company. And here, a lot of Excel skills are involved. There are models. Then there are valuation as as I've mentioned mentioned three statement model which is PNL balance sheet cash flow very important. Uh, then you make the discounted cash flow. There are various type of models. There are project models. There are company models. But um, mainly, uh, you know, uh, the three statement model is the main one and DCF. Then there's a valuation done. As I told you, for valuation, uh, there are different. Ways to value a company. You see, go in the market and see comparable companies, and you see what are their revenues, what are their multiples, and then you see if your companies are lower, then you ask them why are they low, and uh, if they are higher, you ask why are they high. So by comparing, you get a lot of analysis in place, a lot of questions. As an analyst, very important thing is to ask why. Why is something happening? Because investor will ask you. Anybody who's putting in money will ask you why. And if you've not done your valuation properly, you cannot tell them why. Then pitch books. Your presentation skills have to be uh, at their best because 
pitch books and presentations are a very important part of uh, investment banking. Uh, there are proper teasers, there are in, uh, investment memorandums, information memorandums, multiple pitch books going on. Uh, so every information is in place, what the company does, what is the business model, what is the revenue model, what are the technology, products, lots of things go in this particular presentation and the investor decides whether he's interested in the company on this basis. So you have to be very good with your presentation skills here. You have to be very good with the analysis as to why your company is different. Of uh, the other transaction documents, which are, uh, you know, legal documents. Um, so these legal documents are like NDA non-disclosure agreements, then their investment teasers, uh, their term sheets, their confidentiality agreement. These are legal documents, but once you are in place, you understand how to make these, you understand how to read these, you understand how to, you know, basically discuss pointers. Uh, another very important uh, skill which is not taught and cannot be taught is relationship management. When you're, uh, you know, working with the existing client, you have to make sure he's happy as to what you're doing. He's happy with your outcomes. Sometimes deals don't materialize, but relationships go a long way. And uh, doing business development uh, and building relationships is a very important part of investment banking. I think it's the backbone of investment banking. Again, as I say, it's sales and pay. business development. You should be an extrovert. You need to talk to people. You need to figure out ideas around you. If you are just going to a party and you talk to somebody and they say, okay, I'm looking to start a business. The next question should be, okay, are you looking for funds? Or, okay, uh, what is the plan? So, you have to get business from wherever you go. It can be a family gathering, it can be an official party, it can be a friend's party. You need to know how to build um, business. Negotiation skills are very important. Again, you need to know when you have to be aggressive and you need to know when you have to be, uh, you know, a little mellow. You need to understand the other person's needs and at the same point with utmost clarity put your uh, things on skill. So uh, some of these skills are can be got by education but uh, most of them come with your exposure so you need to um, I think for, for to be a banker you need to be very social and uh, you need to know how to talk how to interact because they kind of you know that is they kind of judge you also on that thing and they it's it's a very important point others there are many soft skills involved in this business and it's just not technical obviously your uh, industry knowledge your skills matter but what also matter are these soft skills so personality you need to be a, a good person you know um, personally developed to go into this business. In the interview only, they'll figure out if you're that IB material. If you're not, they'll just put you on back end and uh, in back end services, you'll just be making models and put books. But the fun part of banking is actually going and meeting, you know, big uh, promoters who have built businesses from scratch, understanding, learning. So for that, going client phase, you have to be very good with your communication skills and you have to be um, upbeat in every aspect. Now, um, what all courses um, are recommended? Whoever is doing this um, underlining or whatever, can you please stop? There's, there's no point of doing it. Okay. Um, so, these are some skills for financial modeling and uh, pitch books. You can um, do courses, but for me, what has worked is CFA because it helps me analyze. The exam has, uh, you know, case studies. So you have to read, understand the case and then answer. Or in the first level also, you have uh, questions which are analytical. So everything is analysis. And in our business, as I told you, you have to analyze, you have to have a why. And I think CFA has uh, the best answer to your why. Then MBA Finance also, these are uh, these are entry level courses which can help you get into, you know, uh, banking. 
uh, chartered accountants are given a lot of weightage because their excel skills their financial skills are said to be important but again if you don't have analytical skills there's no point so that was um, this from my side now i would want to know if you guys have any questions i am okay so if anybody has any questions i am open to take you can put them in chat and i can help you answer them. or you can maybe raise a hand okay uh, for me i uh, there's a question like how did icfp help me uh, get here so icfp uh, was the point uh, where i realized that i wanted to be a banker and why because um, because uh, because of my first internship uh they pushed me they understood my iq so basically they will tell you that what can you be good at and i uh, i was analyzed and told that you should go for banking and um, yeah my first internship was as was at valpro and um, there i learned all the pitch books financial modeling and everything although you learn financial modeling and icfp also so uh, they helped me build my uh, core skills to be a banker and you will get a lot of um, you know guidance support as to how you can go ahead how you can um, do better so i think that's how they help me and the placements my, i got placed my first placement was also through icfp so if you work hard they'll give you the opportunity they help you all the way i see wa no i don't think so that's cost accounting i believe in see any financial course can help you but uh, when they see that on your resume they won't be very excited to interview you so i won't recommend that okay uh, faculty yes uh, they're good um, uh, i i passed out i think 2 uh, 3 years back so um, the faculty is pretty good i got my mentor from this college and uh, there are uh, external faculty is also coming up who are working with good companies uh, who are also bankers or uh, you know they are into uh, equity research they are actually doing uh, what they are teaching so you get hands on experience so faculty is pretty good anything else important accounting skills and topics okay i won't say uh, accounting skills i would say financial skills please uh, you know be very specific because if you go in an interview and you say you know i'm an accountant and i know accounts they will be like okay you need to know finance and there's a broad line between it so uh, you need to know how to um, basically read financial statements how how you need to if you get see publicly available data is there for any company say example maruti go online just uh, download uh, the annual report of maruti you see a, a pnl over there so if you see uh, there'll be different lines they will tell you where all the revenue is coming from what are their income um, generators what are their expenses so um why you see maybe you will see specific uh, expenses high so you can go to the notes and see why this expense is high what was this expense high um, you know past year also and if it's not there's generally uh, an explanation given in the annual report so annual report helps you know about the financial condition of uh, the company so for me very important skill and for anybody who's getting into this space is reading the annual reports the financial statements pnl balance sheet and uh, cash flows properly because they tell you sometimes investors say we don't want to invest because this company is very debt heavy uh, they have too much of debt and we will not be able to pay the debt or sometimes the investor says this person has so much of assets i don't want to buy the assets so how do you know all of this you know all of these once you study the uh, reports 
so excel skills are another important thing but very important is reading the reports okay let me see another job profile will go okay uh asadu uh, zama i don't think right now anybody is hiring uh because the condition is so bad but um, if you want uh, just you know go to linkedin just use keywords like investment banking and um, whichever location you want linkedin is a good way just try and approach the promoters directly so that is one thing okay there were a, a couple of projects which we did at icfp which were very helpful for me so they they'll help you do projects like uh, you know um, as i told you reading financial statements so we were told to cover particular public companies and we were told to do analysis on that we were supposed to make financial models on that come up with equity research reports on that so so you analyze the whole stuff and then you have mentors over there to tell you where are you going wrong so they'll tell you how to read it and they'll um, help you know where you're going wrong also to learn case studies so i've never actually you know uh, went ahead and read a lot of case studies to be honest but um, i think in college uh, there were a couple of case studies provided by the mentors because they wrote on their own um actually you can go to cf institute's website and you can see it there or maybe you can connect with icfp they can help you with some case studies but uh, case studies will still not uh, take you to the real thing you learn from practice i've learned most of the things on my job because there are different companies different people different requirements so that's how it, you learn with practice and you won't be good at the first day remember you won't be good it'll take time and there are people with am amazing knowledge in the industry okay i have a question how what to do to improve the soft skills um soft skills you know uh, this is something uh, you get from the beginning but if you want to improve uh, first thing i would suggest is english work on your communication skills and um, take uh, take you know uh, classes maybe in english british council or something like that there are online free courses also if you want just go with them in this uh, sector they with they will judge you on your english if you are in a good place if you are in a good bank they will so that's important how to score the very first internship in the sector okay a uh, uh, nice question how to i think because that's the star nandini um for for somebody like now i i also hire interns so the first see first thing i see the skills that i want do they have it so something like if you highlighted certain things in your resume like financial modeling or uh, dcf valuations or obviously your education if you're a chartered accountant or uh, you know from delhi university or an engineer maybe so these things help but try and put more keywords in your resume that really helps um try and write that you know um, don't write good with microsoft excel or good with ppt nobody is interested to know that write technical terms like financial analysis like financial modeling but remember if you are writing that they will ask you to do that so uh, be prepared and i think your resume well connected number 2 is try and approach people on linkedin that is i think i have done that all my life i still do it to do business development people are ready to help go and ask for it um talk uh, talk to your mentors talk to people around you who are in the sector so they will definitely uh, give you one see a, a solution or an opportunity can be found in multiple places 
So try and look for wherever you think if you know somebody in the financial sector might help. Okay, yeah. So CFA uh, is a very important part of ICFP. Uh, they'll be from scratch. They'll take you. Everything in the book will be taught. There will be mentors who will give you, um, you know, chapter-wise tests, and uh, then there will be after the whole course is completed, there'll be again tests before the exam. There'll be number of mocks. If you don't attempt them, uh, they will keep on repeating, keep on repeating till the time they feel that you're ready for CFA. And it's in a very planned manner, the timelines that till this time you have to do this, this time you have to do this. And the good part is by with doing CFA, you get to do other things also. You know, uh, the projects which generally MBA colleges don't, uh, you don't see financial modeling being taught, which is a very... Um, not nice aspect i feel because if you want to get into banking or maybe equity research also uh, modeling is very important financial analysis is very important what they teach you is corporate finance which most people don't end up doing it, it's a good domain also if you want to do a long project but um, cfa they'll help you the best they'll give you online material they'll give you offline material there'll be regular classes you can there are doubt sessions cleared everything Actuarial science, it's very different. Uh, actuarial science versus investment banking. Investment banking, uh, the, again, investment banking is of two types. It's back-end and front-end. So if you uh, are talking about back-end investment banking, which is just, uh, you know, doing documentation, sitting on desk, actuarial can be compared. But front-end banking cannot be compared because uh, we are constantly interaction, interacting. We have to get business. We are talking and doing uh, all of this also. Actuarials is uh, more of a desk job. Um, it's, you know, uh, I have not uh, understood it properly, but uh, what I understand, because I I had uh, researched when I was doing it, so it's more mathematical. And it's not logic, what I understand. So here you have to analyze things, so you have to put your mind. It's just not uh, mathematics happening. And uh, from banking, one more important thing is from banking, you can go to multiple other domains. Like I've seen in my career, in my um, seniors, what I've seen is that um, after being bankers for four, for five years, or six, seven years, they understand so well to, you know, make business models and strategize for business that they join as heads of strategy or CEOs, CFOs for different companies. So, yeah. And or their expertise in particular sectors, say healthcare, say consumer. So that then they lead verticals of a particular business in a particular sector. So that's also how can, but I think actuarial will be typically in that domain also. Is CFA only meant for commerce background students or could be done by students from other? Uh, I had a, uh, you know, um, um, a fellow classmate, she was English on us and, uh, and she was amazing. Um, uh, she had amazing scores and uh, she did right now, she cleared two levels of CFA again and she, she's doing a master's in finance. It doesn't matter. CFA is not a course which, you know, needs to have um, a particular background. Anybody uh, with hard work can get it. Any other questions? What type of questions an interviewer can ask if I'm appearing for the interview on the basis of financial modeling? Okay. Oh, what type of questions? So generally they'll ask you formulas for ratios. They will ask you uh, what is a formula for current ratio, what is for debt to equity. These are very low level questions they'll ask. Next level question they are, they'll ask you if you see a pattern, 
from 17 okay I'll, i'm answering one by one so um yeah so if you've seen a pattern of say a ratio uh, say current ratio is 1 1 1.2 1.3 what do you see the forecast to be you know on the basis of assumptions so when you learn financial modeling you will see that you know there are ways to do it there are ways to increase uh, uh, by, by a growth element you increase the forecast or you take an average so they'll ask you that that how do you do this then um, you know they'll ask you how do you calculate uh, or you forecast future depreciation on what what ratio do you do so generally when we do financial modeling and we have, ta we have to take out say COGS so we take COGS as a percentage of sales so now if you say COGS as a percentage of sales was 70, 75%, 78% for the last three years. Now it cannot go to 69% until unless there's some major issue which the company is telling you. It will grow. So see the percentage of growth and grow it accordingly. So they, they will ask you these kind of questions that uh, how will you uh, uh, say, you know, what is the formula for VAC or um, what is, which multiple should you take um, if you're analyzing a particular sector and why is EV by EBITDA? So a very frequent question asked is why do you calculate e why EV by EBITDA is a better multiple than EV by revenue? So, or EV by PAT. So enterprise value, people who understand finance will, um, uh, enterprise value is the value of the whole company and EBITDA is operating profit, which is the profit of the whole company. So they are like to like, they're apple to apple. And that's why the multiple is good. So if you're doing EV by PAT, PAT is basically the revenue earned by the equity holders. So it's profit after tax. It's not the company, it's basically for the equity holders. So it's not like to like. So they will ask you these kind of questions when you go to financial modeling. How many, how many number of hours daily one should dedicate to do CFA? Is it easy? It uh, depends on your background, what background you're coming from. See, um, if you, it depends on subjects, well, because there are different subjects that economics, there are accounts, there's ethics, there's fixed income. So like I was an economics on a spoon. So eco took me relatively less hours and accounts took me uh, a large amount of hours. So you need to, everybody's timetable has to be scheduled differently. It's, it depends on the person. But yeah, uh, if you start six months, uh, for CFA level one, then I think two, three hours a day is enough. Okay, what is CFA? CFA is Chartered Financial Analyst, which is a designation you earn, and it's not a degree that you earn. It's a designation meaning like doctor. You can, doctor, you can prefix before the name. CFA, you can suffix uh, by your name. So, um, yeah, it's a designation you earn, and uh, Basically, it's all about financial analysis. Level one is comparatively easy. Level two is a difficult one. And level two will help you about equity research, financial analysis. And level three is more of portfolio management. Is it okay to take an Udemy investment banking course to take some knowledge because I'm waiting for my MBA admission? Yeah, sure, if you can, but I don't know. I've not uh, done this um, ever, taking Udemy or whatever that is. I've not taken it. You can read about it and um, maybe decide post to MBA. Not decide right now. Don't put your feet into boards. That's my suggestion. Apart from IB, what are the roles a student could get after CFA master? Okay. Yeah, there are multiple. Uh, Finance anywhere you you can get it. Equity research, investment banking, and then portfolio man. Portfolio management is a very good domain to go. Lots of money. Then there's risk analysis, there are valuations, a um, lot of things. Any financial sector that you want to go in, you can go after going see it. They value it. And now they value it more than chart accountancy. Any other question? Difference between management consulting and investment banking. Uh, management consulting, 
is more on business consulting they will tell you how to uh, you know run your business your current business and how to strategize for future growth investment banking is transaction advisory management consulting is business advisory we advise you only on transactions if you want to buy sell raise funds raise loans all of that we help you that so transaction advisory and business advisory is the difference between uh, the two management consultants won't uh, uh, help you in transaction advisory transaction advisory consultants can help you cannot help you both ways in management advisory any other question if uh, right now i don't think there are any more questions if you have any other questions uh, you can uh, reach icfp and uh, they'll get your questions to me or they'll answer okay thank you so much thank you for attending this thanks thanks a lot everyone